NBC News on KCAA Loma Linda, sponsored by Teamsters Local 1932, protecting the future of working families, Teamsters1932.org. <laughs> All right, good evening. Welcome to the Ferrandose Show on KCA Radio, 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Also streaming from the KCA Radio.com website. It's Sunday night. You know we got to bless the show. Let's go. When I was in my mother's womb, I had a calling on my life to do something in the glory of God and marry it like a wife. Commit myself to his word and never be led astray. And when it's all over, when he comes, I'll be glad to see that day in the morning time. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to the Frondosia Show on KCA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Also streaming from the KCA Radio.com website, the station that leaves no listener behind. Also, we got the app, too. So if you got to get out of your car, you got to go in the house, download the app or type in KCA Radio.com. Click listen live and watch live. and You'll catch me. Live in the station right now. Um, I am by myself. I'm Han Solo tonight. Uh, my crew is out doing their thing, of course. And so I'm here to uh, bring some conversations. I got a couple callers uh, calling in right now. Matter of fact, let's play the public service announcement real quick and we'll get back to the Ferrandos they show on KCA Radio 106.5 FM at 1050 AM. Some of us still carry the burden of battle. It threatens to drown us in our everyday lives. In battle, we had our weapons and combat gear to keep us safe, to keep us confident. But when we returned home, we were not armed with weapons and gear to cope with our own minds. I was lucky to find my combat gear, my mental weapon, and it's called Calmigo. Calmigo is a drug-free device that allows you to achieve calm in less than three minutes. In moments of anxiety, stress, anger, panic, or insomnia. Not with medication, but rather by activating the parasympathetic nervous system through breathing regulation and multisensory stimulation. A recent study has shown that Comigo decreases PTSD and anxiety levels in veterans, helping those who are suffering and having a long-lasting effect. Visit Comigo.com to learn how you can get Comigo through the VA or with a special veteran's discount code. Some of us still carry the burden of battle. It threatens to drown us in our everyday lives. In battle, we had our weapons and combat gear to keep us safe, to keep us confident. But when we returned home, we were not armed with weapons and gear to cope with our own minds. I was lucky to find my combat gear, my mental weapon, and it's called Comigo. Comigo is a drug-free device that allows you to achieve calm in less than three minutes. In moments of anxiety, stress, anger, panic, or insomnia. Not with medication, but rather by activating the parasympathetic nervous system through breathing regulation and multisensory stimulation. A recent study has shown that Comigo decreases PTSD and anxiety levels in veterans, helping those who are suffering and having a long-lasting effect. Visit Comigo.com to learn how you can get Comigo through the VA or with a special veteran's discount code.
but it ain't fair. Amen goes right there. <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody say. in the building, yo, you saved me from the bottom when the bottom kept on pulling, I was caught up in so much drama, thought God wouldn't do it, but he stuck to his word and gave me that second life, if I received and I believe all things done through Christ, yeah, yo, I'm really feeling, feeling good right now, made it through the fire, uh, made it through the storm, uh, made it through the wire, uh, didn't conform, I uh, elevated higher, I'm shouting hallelujah like, that purpose and making them nervous yeah shaking up the circus yeah waking up the church is like let's get to working and keep on praising the lord yeah, yeah when you talk that life you gotta walk that life you can't fear no evil don't walk with light you gonna pay the price when you grind through strife but that's part of the process to shape you right yeah yeah i'm really feeling good right now covered by his blood i'm feeling free right now yeah. he ain't just the weather the weather when you dripping in favor we are better together all right, welcome back to the Frondoza Show on KCA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Again, also stream of the KCAA Radio.com website. So if you got to get out of your vehicle, grab your laptop or your smartphone, type in KCAA Radio.com or go download the app. That's right. We're streaming from the app so you can get that on your device. And now talk about being global. Yeah, we're everywhere now for sure. All right, so let's see. You can catch me on Sunday nights or Sunday evenings on the Revolution Radio Show on Lit Live. Used to be Dash Radio. We do our Christian hip-hop talk show over there. Uh, where else? Beyond 2D, every second and fourth Tuesday. You can catch me on Beyond 2D talking about life, different conversations. We just completed Grief in four sessions, and we just did uh, last Tuesday when I was in St. Louis, we did um, Forgiveness. Yeah, we talked about forgiveness. So you can catch me there. Uh, the Block Talk radio show is coming back for M May. It's Lupus Awareness Month. And so I'm working with a group of ladies who are going to help put some guests together. So probably about Thursdays in May, uh, about 7.30, the Block Talk show will be live. So you can catch that. I'll be posting that as well. And then, oh, of course... Um, the Fran Dozier Show, the Trench Talk segment, the Military Talk Show is on Tuesdays, 10 a.m. Pacific Time on NBR. Um, great to be over there to have my military show back on uh, on the air as a full show, not just as a segment. Uh, what else? I think that's it. Um, tonight, today, I was able to speak um, at the New Earth Christian Church. Uh, I do youth Sundays there. I think it's almost going on two years almost now. Um, and that topic today was, you know, understanding the Trinity, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, but more so around unconditional love and conditional love, especially as it relates to our heart, the heart of man. That's our soul, right? Your mind, will, and emotions. Well, guess what? Inside of your soul, your mind, will, and emotions, unconditional love still has conditions. So we talked about just pure love but also failure because sometimes we're doing things that we don't want to do and we're doing them anyway and we call that failure but failure could be another opportunity maybe take another angle at something but not to give up right so that should be airing probably late this week or next week but once that publishes i'll share that as well um, but yeah failure what does failure mean to you Sometimes in those decisions that we make around life, we do it for a reason. And then that unforeseen consequence happens. And then we're stuck in that unforeseen consequence and that reason. So you defend that reason. But imagine just living an unreasonable life and just choosing. And if it doesn't work, you can choose something else. So there's no failure. I can't. Oh, there's failure right there by the microphone. I can't show you failure in nature. There's no failure in nature, only in language. And so where are you living from in these conversations? You're living for what your spirituality has to say or are you living in what your opinions and what the world has to say about failure? And there is some freedom in that. 
So remember, failure could be that you're doing what you don't want to do and you're doing it anyway. And because you don't want to do it, you're not fulfilling it, you're not completing it. And we swear that we're resilient people. But are you able to bounce back when you break a commitment to yourself? We hear it all the time around New Year's. It's hard for human beings to keep it in power and context through circumstances and concerns and worries. So that was the conversation today. Very blessed to have that. Shouts out to my cousin, Pastor Larry, for allowing me to be the youth speaker on second Sundays at the New Earth Christian Church. All right, so shouts out to my crew. Uh, we're gonna do a episode of Sports Collective TV, media, radio, I was hoping my, my, my crew was here, but I can hold it. I can hold it down. Uh, so the 22nd timeout, my segment, the basketball segment for me is Chasing Hoop Dreams. I play basketball. I forget sometimes because I was in the military for so long that I had a Chasing Hoop Dream myself. And so the family that we have on tonight, uh, they actually, the coach was on my show when I first started LA Talk Live back in, I think it was... That had to be like 2013. I have to look at that show. I think it's 2013 or, or so. Um, I did a, a lupus talk, and he came in uh, with his sister-in-law. And so all these years later, um, <laughs> he's still coaching, and his daughter is a basketball player now. So we want to have a conversation with them about life and what's going on with her and her dad. So let's go live right now with the Frondosi Show on KCA Radio. Shout out to what's to count. Coach! Is it gone? Hello? What's happening? What's happening? How you be? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm good. It's been a while. I know. It's been a few years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do me a favor. Introduce yourself, but don't give it all away. Okay. My name is Ricky Blackman. Uh, I believe last time we spoke, I was either coaching at Washington Prep High School or Westchester yeah. High School, coaching girls basketball. And today? Uh, today I'm just uh, running my kids around town, uh, <laughs> helping them focus on their endeavors athletically. Cool, cool. Uh, let's go full circle real quick. Um, back then you were doing coaching girls basketball. How, how did that play out for you in the transition to – you know, coaching your and helping your children out today? Um, for the most part, my kids were raised in the gym. Yeah. So they they were with me every step of the way. And a, a lot of what they do right now is probably a result of uh, them being in the gym with me every day. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, it wasn't really a transition, I would say. It was just a way of life, pretty <laughs> much. Yeah. When did you see... Uh, your daughter Jordan, you know, start to pick up that basketball and had a, a different interest than just. Um, the story I like to tell is is we had a little Nerf basketball court in the bedroom, and uh, I didn't think she was going to play because when I was coaching, she would always sit with the cheerleaders. Mm. So I thought she was going to be a cheerleader, and her mom is a, was a girly girl and was hoping to have a girly girl, <laughs> which she still is, but. Uh, she would, my son and I would be playing like one on one in the room, and she'd be shooting her jump shots, and, and she'd be practicing her form. And all I can remember her being like, "Dad, do I shoot like this? <laughs> do I shoot like this?" Interrupting us in the midst of us uh, posting each other up. Right. Yelling, do I do I shoot like this? Do I shoot like this? And that was the that was the early stages of uh, of of her development, I guess you would say. Wow. Mm-hmm. And what about your son? Did he ever pick up the ball or? Oh well, he was the oldest, so yeah, he he was the one that was in the layup lines during games and, and disrupting practice, <laughs> which which he eventually picked up the same habit of disrupting practice. <laughs> and I think she likes to tell the story of he was dribbling while I was talking, and uh, I think I may have threw the ball away from her to get her to to be quiet while I was instructing. And and that's a story she likes to tell. <laughs> She's sitting with me right now, so as a matter of fact. Cool, cool, cool. We're gonna bring her on in a second. Yeah. So how how from from now you, you, you got two roles in this. You got the father role and you got the coach role. How do you yeah. separate the two? 
uh, it was easy. It was it was it wasn't that hard when she was young. Um, once she got to about ten, eleven years old, is when it became difficult. Um, and and the the role between father and and coach became a little blurred. <laughs> I think there was a, a particular game where uh, he did something that I had taught her not to do. Okay. But she she did it anyway, and I made the mistake of um, I had a I had a, a tablet in my like a coaching board in my hand. Oh. And she made the mistake, and I got frustrated and and threw the tablet down, not trying to hit oh. the ground, but it did, and it, the, the tablet broke, and the referees oh. caught a tech on me, and her mom was mad at me, and she was <laughs> a little embarrassed, and the whole nine, and I was oh. embarrassed, and uh. And, and that was probably led to about the roughest part of our 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 uh, our relationship in that moment. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 great that you saw that because some parents don't see that when we do that. Oh, trust me, I know. Right, I know, I know. And, and that... but I think for us, I think for us, with me being a coach first, yeah. Um, there's a level of honesty that I've always had with her. Yeah. And I've always tried to, even though she may not have received it in the way that I would like it to. Yeah. Um, I believe that it, it has helped her as she's gotten older and matured a little bit to understand that when I talk to her in ways, in terms of basketball, I don't talk to her as her father. I talk to her as what a coach would see. And I think she, she's gotten to a level of appreciation about the honesty that I have with her. Cause I'm not like, I'm not the well, my wife and I are not the type of parents that just gonna tell her she's doing good just for the sake of her ego. Right, right, right. You know, we're gonna we're gonna correct her mistakes. We're going to to let her know where she was wrong, but we're also gonna be the first ones cheering for her. For but sure. I was like that anyway as a coach. I'm a, I tell I tell you to tell my kids all the time. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be your, your loudest cheerleader, but I'm also gonna be your worst critic. For sure. And um and I and I've been the same way with my children. I'm gonna be your biggest cheerleader, but I'm also gonna not sit there and let you think that you're doing well or somebody else's fault when you're not living up to your capability. Now, now, you, you, your son was that relationship kind of similar, or did you take it a little, a little bit easy on her? No, I think with my son, um, it was a thing where with boys, it's a little different. Like I, I explain all the time, with, with boys, you have to prove yourself every day that you know what you're talking about. Mm. And uh, with him, it was more or less um, allowing him to learn and allowing him to, to uh, give him the space to learn. Yeah. With with girls, when you coach them, I think that it's, it's about trust. Mm. And when you get girls to trust you, then they'll run through a wall for you. Yeah. Almost to their detriment because they'll do exactly what you tell them to do as opposed to reading the situation and coming up with the, the alternatives to, to, to do once the one thing that works doesn't work. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So when girls trust you, they'll they'll play hard for you no matter what. When boys look different. You have to you have to come to work every day and prove to them that you know what you're talking to. So our relationships were a little bit different. Yeah. But now that they've both gotten older, I can talk to them kinda in the same way and they both have the same understanding. That's cool. Yeah. What do you want to say about your wife and the support that you get? From that, play. oh, my wife has been Coach. tremendously supportive. <laughs> my, she, she's a, she's a quasi coach, you know what I mean. But she's still mom. Yeah. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, she she she'll take the mom role, but she also understands that whatever's being done is being done in the best interest of of the kids. So she'll she will understand what's going on, mm-hmm. but there are times when you know, the emotions of a mom kind of take over and she has to, you know, and she deals with it in the best way she can, but she's been super supportive. You know, we have, uh, we have three kids. Uh, we got our youngest that's coming along. He just turned 10. Mm-hmm. And so she understands the sports mom and, <laughs> and, and she rolls with it. She, she, I couldn't ask for a more supportive person in my life in, in regards to our kids endeavors or my coaching uh, aspirations. You know, when you when you describe it that way and you say it like that, you know, with, with marriages, I'm learning after, you know, failed one. Um, mm-hmm. 
you you want that there 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 has to be a vision for the house, right? Right. Right. And and so right. if if that spouse buys into the vision of, of that man, and then the the husband buys into the vision of that wife, or she accepts your vision, right? It, it it's a different dynamic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And we both we both in the same mindset of you know, especially now, we're not the type of parents that's going to tell the kids that everything they do is right. Yeah. And it's it's the coach's fault as to why you weren't playing. Or it's the it's the coach's fault as to why you weren't why you didn't live up to your potential. Like now we're gonna deal with you first, and then we'll deal with the others. As long as you're doing your job, that allows us to talk to the coach in a way that you know can benefit you. But if you're not out there doing your job, then there's no reason for us to go to talk to the coach about anything. You got to handle you first, and if you handle you first, then everything else will fall into place. That's what we both believe. Now. Just let the listeners know, you know, your love for basketball. Where did that come from? Ah, it just comes from from being a kid, and, and you know, I came up with Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, <laughs> and that Michael Jordan, and all that stuff came on the scene, and and I just developed a love for it. basketball. wasn't even my favorite, my first sport. I played baseball. Yeah, and uh, you know, throughout the course of of just moving on in life, basketball became. Sort of like a refuge, I guess you would say. For sure. Most of my relationships that I have are a result of the basketball relationships that I developed. Um, and so it just became the number one thing for me. I was able to, to play in high school and mm-hmm. go on and play in college and um, and then just pass it on to the children. Yeah. You know, our era of basketball totally is different than this era today. Yeah. Way different. The 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 biggest thing that I, I I see for myself when I watch even professional is does anybody ever box out anymore? <laughs> it's like, right, 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 right. The fundamentals. Well, the, the fundamentals. I think we like to go ahead. No, I said the fundamentals. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I think that um I think you're right, but I also think that we look at it from a uh a selfish point of view. Mm. You know, because Sometimes we have those expectations of kids to do what we did, but we didn't raise them like we were raised. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And they didn't – the brand of basketball that they watch is not the same brand of basketball that we watch. For sure. You know, my youngest just asked me the other day, well, what was basketball like when you were playing? And when he asked me, I almost took offense to it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he was only 10 years old, but I almost took offense to it like like I was playing in the Bob Cousy era. <laughs> you know what I mean? But – when I thought about it before I answered him, I thought, well, my era for him was the Bob, Bob Cousy era. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even though it was it was advanced in my mind, yeah. in his mind, you know, it was black and white. Yeah. So I had to explain to him, like, nah, we, we, we play basketball the same way you play basketball. Now, all the crossovers and the setback jumpers, and the, nah, that wasn't, that wasn't there for us when no. I was your age. Mm-mm. But five years later, when I was 15, yeah, the kid of crossover was a thing. Out of, well, not out of Iverson, but like Tim Hardaway and guys like that were a thing. So we picked up on that stuff. Now, it wasn't like you guys play, but we still made moves. We wasn't just strictly right-handed. Right. Or strictly like, well, most left-handers are always strictly left-handed. But, no, nah, we, we played a diverse brand of basketball. But it was that's in the era when it was, you know, first being introduced to us. The three-pointer wasn't a – wasn't – as prevalent as it is now. But no. we still shot jump shot. Yes. We still shot threes, you know what I mean? So I think it's I, I think it's it's all relative. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it's all the same. It's all about being competitive. Yeah. And going out there and competing as hard as you can and, and, and playing the, the best way you know how to be successful. At the end of the day it's a matter of playing hard. Yeah. That don't change. That that yeah. don't change no near, no era. You know what I mean? You gotta play hard and you gotta compete. And that aspect has never changed. You know, when I look at at basketball today, I remember, you know, in my era, like, we we did drills without the ball. Like, you had to earn (laughs) those drills to to get the ball into practice and move without the ball and play in defense. And defense wins the games and things like that. It was a different different era for us, for sure. Right, right. Well, I think it's it's, it's, it's a matter of uh, when we came up, we played pickup. Mm -hmm. And we would go to the park. And, you know, if you went to the park and you didn't win, you had to sit on the sideline. Mm-hmm. 
and and that developed, especially when you were young. Like I came up, you know, I was I was 14 years old playing against grown men, mm-hmm. and and it was it was a matter of you might not have touched the ball, you might not have got the <laughs> shot. So you had to figure out how to be how to be. Um, how to effective. contribute? Yeah, how to contribute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to without the ball, contribute. that's what I'm saying. Without, without the ball, ball. Yeah, without exactly. the ball, yeah. And that, and I think that's the one aspect that that this new generation doesn't that hadn't had to deal with because people don't play pickup like that anymore. Yeah, you know what I mean. One of the best things that kind of helped you develop as a young person was if you were sitting on the sideline and say a team that was winning, one of the dudes quit and had to go home, mm. and somebody would say, "Hey, young fella." Want to run with us? <laughs> that was like, yeah. That was like, oh yeah, I made it. I made it, I'm right? Good, uh, they think I'm good enough to play with them, right? And that's the only thing that I think today's kids don't don't have the um, the um, what word I'm looking for? Maybe the, the experience the, or something, or not experience, but just as yeah, that experience of being oh they chose me, yeah. Right? Instead of thinking, I deserve to be there. I <laughs> right? Be that there. was I different for us. That was yeah, different. It was different. It was yeah, different. You, you was able to stick your chest out, especially if you was with your homeboys and you were the one that got picked. You know what I'm saying? So it was like it gave you a certain level of uh, confidence. They'd be like, oh, they respect me. I got a respect level out here. Coach, so I, I, w- I, I think would, that's the biggest, the biggest thing. I would show up to the, to the gym, man, at the park, man, and <clears throat> with a little bit of self-doubt, right. self-confidence. And then you get picked, and then it's like you're looking at your opponent like, can I guard him? Can he guard me? And then when right. you realize that he can't and you can, right. it was like, oh, right. shoot. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm good. It's I'm like, great. oh, I'm good. Yeah, yeah I'm cool. You know, I'm good. Yeah. It was, it was a di- and that's like you said, that was a growth, a level of growth experience that seems to be a little bit different today, I thought. Right, right. So being the coach, how important – or do you push the academic side of this conversation? Oh, I mean, I, I, academics are <laughs> the most important thing. If yeah. you don't get your grades right, you can't play. You know what I mean? I was a, I was a, uh, a, a honor student. I was in the gifted program. I was in the magnet program. So mm-hmm. for me, academics was always number one. And we pushed that. My wife is, is my wife was shut it down in a heartbeat. <laughs> you know, if my daughter and my daughter has a four point oh. And if, and my wife is on the the portal or whatever yeah. academic website that she's supposed to check. Yeah. And she makes sure that she checks them on an everyday basis. And I think that translated to my daughter because my daughter, you know, she's like, her name is Jordan, by the way. Mm-hmm. And she 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 has a particular uh, dictatorishness as far as her grades go, where she won't let herself slip. Yeah. So I think they all understand the importance of of academics and how that plays a role in their athletic endeavors. A few more questions before we bring Jordan on the line. Okay. Um, today's era of basketball, uh, going from high school to college, I mean, there's so, again, there's so much going on today that wasn't happening right. back when we were growing up and in, in, in looking for those scholarships and those opportunities. Right. From, from, a, from, a, from a parent perspective first, like, what is your view on that? Uh, for us, it's all about um, it's all about commitment. You know what I mean. It's the easy way is to is to uh, is to put your is to be in a situation and because because it is difficult, you want to run away from it. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a, a, a huge number of kids that have gone into the transfer portal or whatnot, and a lot of it is because they think they're better than what they are, or they don't want to deal with the um, the um, the trials and errors of mm-hmm. developing, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? They don't want to, they don't, they don't want to go through the fight. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of, of, I believe a lot of life is about getting through the fight. Sure. And so that's what, we, and that's what we transfer onto our kids is that you're going to face adversity and you can't run from adversity. Yeah. You know, it, it don't matter what happens off, on court, off the court, you're going to find adversity. Yeah. And if you, if you develop a, a mindset of running from it, or thinking that there's a better situation somewhere else, then you know you're never going to to develop in the way you need to. Yeah, and and, and that's our biggest thing. And there is no running from it. There is no now. If you're just being, if it's a situation where it just don't fit, or the coach is abusive, or right, it's just not right. a, 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 a it's not a great environment for you, then cool, we'll we'll handle that. But if it's just because 
you're not playing as much as you want to, yeah. as you think you should be, no, nah, we're not we're not doing that. You know what I mean? You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna earn your keep, basically. And 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 from the coach perspective of that? Same thing. Same thing. You gotta thing? earn your money. <laughs> yeah. Like even when I was coaching, you know, I had a conversation with my kids about everybody has a certain level of rope. Yeah. And somebody who's productive is gonna be way more their rope is gonna be a lot longer than somebody who who's not as productive. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I can if if you have somebody that you can depend on to make the right plays, to make the right decisions, to do their job, whether it be scoring, playing defense, rebounding, whatever your job is, if you can do your job effectively, then your rope is going to be long. If you get out there and you you can't do your job effectively, then your rope is going to be shorter. And that just is what it is. If you want a long rope, then you got to do your job. Whatever that may entail. Yeah. And that's what we that's what we, you know, we we instill in our kids. You know, we had a situation a week ago where it was like, you know, are you doing your job? You know, I'll give you the perfect example. Today, my daughter was in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, fourth quarter rolled around, and she wasn't in the lineup in the beginning of the fourth quarter. And she looked at me, and I looked at her, <laughs> and about a minute later, she checked into the game. And in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, this is what you wanted. <laughs> now, prove that you deserve to be out there. Right. And that's exactly what she did. She, yeah. pre- she, she actually made winning plays. That's it wasn't cool. about scoring. Because a lot of people, a lot of parents, a lot of you know players, only think that the only way they can be effective on the floor is by scoring. Exactly. And and exactly. and I've I've the the reason why I love her as a basketball player, regardless of whether or not she's my daughter, is that she can affect the game in a bunch of other ways outside of scoring. Exactly. And she can score too if you need her to. Right. You know she makes she makes defensive plays. She makes the right pass. She can hit open shots. She doesn't have to have the ball in her hands to be effective on the basketball court. And that's one of the things I love about her the most. Are are you looking into the next level yet, or do you take it oh, no. game she by has game? Offers. She, she has offers, and we're we're hoping that, that um, come the beginning of the school year that she'll commit to wherever she wants to go that, so that she could play her senior year without, without the worries about yeah. impressing people to get to where she has to go. So that's the goal is for her to decide where she wants to go at the beginning of the school year, make that commitment, and then we just get through that senior year and, and send her off on our way. And lastly, you know, the future of women's basketball look like it's, it's about to do a turn. I mean, I used to go and watch the, the Sparks play, have season tickets. Me and my buddy would share season tickets and things like that. What, right. is, your, what is your view now on college, women's college and, and professional basketball? If you have one, um, you know, I was. It's funny that you asked. Cause I was thinking about it today mm-hmm. when I was watching because, you know, knowing that watching my daughter play on that center court, I remember four or five years ago when we were looking forward to getting to this point, <laughs> and and then like with her being on that center court and a bunch of other girls that I've either coached or watched develop from the time they were in the third or fourth grade mm-hmm. to watch where they are now, mm-hmm. and then to see that next group. Like that next group of kids that are out there shooting at halftime, right, or in between quarters, <laughs> that are watching them play. Exactly. You know, it, it, I just believe that it's going to do nothing but get better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because our, like, my daughter is watching the Caitlin Clark and the Juju, right, and and all those girls that are playing right now. In another year or so, she's going to be on that level. Right. And those kids that have, are watching her play in high school are going to remember saying, "Oh, I watched number ten from Cal Sparks," or. Ten from why not, and like she's somebody's role model. She doesn't know it yet. Yeah, she probably doesn't even think of it like that. <laughs> but she's somebody's role model. Some little she's girl. Somebody, was watching. Yeah, some little girl that was watching her today. Yeah, do the things that she did is looking at her and would be like, I want to be like that. Yeah. So it it, it don't it, it's going to just grow. It's just going to expand. You know, it's just a, it's just for me for women's basketball. You know, I feel like people have to appreciate it for. No, they're not men. No, they're not. Dunking from the free throw line. They ball. Or, they ball just as they, well. Hey, I, I honestly <laughs> they believe they bid balling. I said this. I said this about ten, twelve years ago. Sometimes watching a good girls basketball game mm-hmm. is better than watching the boys I'm or the men. I'm telling you, because they play you. from a from a from a traditional yes team standpoint. It's yeah. not. A, they don't necessarily, even though their athleticism has grown, 
it's not about their athleticism. It's no, about it's playing the, a game. The, the fundamentals. It, it, yeah. The, the, there's, you, there's nothing more exciting than seeing a fundamental basketball game. It's easy yeah, to do the highlights. A, it's easy for yeah, the flashy watching stuff. watching a good basketball game. Yeah, watching a good you know basketball I mean? game is fundamentals. Yeah, it's like, like while people like watching the Warriors play because it's not about dunks and nothing with the Warriors. It's about team basketball, movement, mm-hmm, defense, mm-hmm. Yep. And, and you know what I mean? And making open shots and all that and sharing the basketball. Yeah, you got your Steph and you got your Clays, but it's the other guys that help make that thing go. Right. And I think with, with women's and girls' basketball, it's all about everybody relying on each other to make that thing go. And that's basketball in its purest form. And, I, in, and in reality, it's life in its purest form. Yes. You know what I mean? Exactly, we all exactly. need each other in order for this thing to work. And, and, and I think we've gotten away from that, thinking that it's all about my individual success. Yes. And it's not about that. In order for everything to work in harmony, we all got to rely on each other. Because we, we all have abilities and traits that, that are codependent, which makes everything good. Before you get out of here, man, you mm-hmm. and I met initially advocating for lupus with your yes. sister-in-law. Yes. Um, yep. That Awareness Month is coming up again next month. Mm-hmm. That was... When I met you, you was you were special to me because you took time out to help that community exercise, stay in shape. Yeah, that yeah, vitality, so that aliveness. Life. Like yeah. that was cool, man. And I've never yeah. forgot that. I've always appreciated that from you. Nah, and you know, honestly, man, that was probably one of the more happier times of my life mm. when I was doing what I was doing, and it's something that I'm I'm, I'm trying to get back to. Yeah. And it, and it may be with within basketball, but it's just about the that 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 gives me joy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Going to work every day, working a nine to five, you tend to feel like a robot. Yeah, you know, you know. It, and when seasons change, like in the fall, when it's getting dark early, and you're getting home, and it's dark, and you leave, and it's dark, <laughs> you feel like a robot. Yeah, I know and that I life. Like, and for me, the, it's the extracurricular, it's the, it's the training, it's the that gives me joy. And then the joy also comes with watching what you do turn into success. For you. Exactly. And that's why I do it because I want to. I, I I truly enjoy watching people grow and develop and become successful, and knowing that you had a hand in that. Uh, so she and I have uh, teamed up again. So uh, we're going to be putting some interviews together in May. So again, okay. I just want to thank you for that. You know, no, no that experience from you. back then, man. So thanks for calling in tonight. Appreciate you. Uh, okay. This is the Frondose Show on KCA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Sports Selective TV, Media Radio at Instagram. Sports Selective Media. Shouts out to my crew. We're going to take a public service announcement break and then come back with Jordan right here on the Frondose Show on KCA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. And we're waiting for the public service announcement to launch shortly. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be right back. Shout us out what's the count. WDCONSCT.org. Some of us still carry the burden of battle. It threatens to drown us in our everyday lives. In battle, we had our weapons and combat gear to keep us safe, to keep us confident. But when we returned home, we were not armed with weapons and gear to cope with our own minds. I was lucky to find my combat gear, my mental weapon, and it's called Comigo. Comigo is a drug-free device that allows you to achieve calm in less than three minutes. In moments of anxiety, stress, anger, panic, or insomnia. Not with medication, but rather by activating the parasympathetic nervous system through breathing regulation and multisensory stimulation. A recent study has shown that Comigo decreases PTSD and anxiety levels in veterans, helping those who are suffering and having a long-lasting effect. Visit Comigo.com to learn how you can get Comigo through the VA or with a special veteran's discount code. All right, welcome back to the Front Doors. They show on KCA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Also streaming from the KCA Radio.com website. If you are just now tuning in, you missed it, you got to go back and rewatch it on YouTube or the KCA Radio page. Just click on Sunday as a schedule. You'll see my picture down there and click on and watch all of this episode and previous episodes as well. Um, also, I'll be posting some things on our Instagram at Sports Like the Media as well. What else? And make sure you get the app too. All right, go download the KCA Radio app and download that to your device so you won't miss out on any shows here on the network. 
All right, so Jordan, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for hanging out with me tonight. Yeah, no problem. So thank you, you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Very, very special guest for us. Um, so you've heard your dad this first half hour or so talk about you and basketball. Introduce yourself and just give people a little bit and then we'll get started. Um, well, my name is Jordan Blackman. Um, I'm in the 11th grade. Um, and at Bishop Montgomery High School. Mm-hmm. And right now I'm playing for Why Not Premier. Cool. Your dad mentioned, you know, the, the, the Nerf basketball as a child. What, for you, when was that that you noticed, like, I think I'm going to take this basketball and do something with it. Did you ever have that thought? Um, I remember I was, like, probably seven or so, mm-hmm. maybe a little younger, and my parents were just driving around, my older brother, and I was begging my mom to put me in the club team. Like, I'd always ask her, like, <laughs> like when are you going to let me play? When are you going to let me play? <laughs> and And then... She said, okay, you can play. And then that's when I started playing West Coast Premier. Wow. And that was really, that was really when I, that was what I was going to do. That love, that love for the game started? Yeah. You know, when you're watching your brother back then and then playing with the girls and practicing and being on the court, did you already have a level of self-confidence or that mental toughness? Yeah, for sure. Like, I... Well, I was young, so, like, I wasn't really worried about, like, everything else. Like, I just kind of wanted to go out there and play. Yeah. But my brother, my older brother, and my dad and my mom always, like, instilled that confidence in me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Today, I mean, you've done some great things so far. You've got some offers. What, What are you looking for right now? Well, I mean, to be honest, just mm-hmm. trying to enjoy my last year of club um, and then commit somewhere mm-hmm. and then enjoy my last year of high school. And then that's, that's really on my agenda as of right now. You know, we, we, me and your dad talked about the fundamentals of basketball, a little bit different than our era, than your era, of course, today. Um, but how is it for you? That that basketball IQ that it takes to be an all around, you know, defensive player, scorer, you know where do you equate that IQ? Watching watching sports, watching your family, like where do you equate that that IQ? Because it takes something. Um, honestly, I've had my fair share of coaches <laughs> that, you know, they'll let you know when you're doing wrong. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of just become like like, nobody wants to, you know, be told to, you know, fix what they're doing over and over again. So I guess kind of just not wanting to, you know, just making sure I do the right thing has just, you know, buffed up my IQ, I guess. Yeah. You know, people say that there's no I in team, right? And a lot of coaches say that. What is your views or thought process about when you hear someone say there's no I in team? Um, I think that they are completely right because you can't you can't win a basketball game by yourself. Mm-hmm. So you have to have your team. Um, and like obviously, like there's going to be roles mm-hmm. that are bigger, roles that are shorter. But at the end of the day, you still need all those roles to win a game. And I I, I agree with you. And I would like to add this perspective if you're open to look at it. Um, for me, when I say that there's there is an I in team because if that individual player is dealing with life, dealing with things at home or dealing with peer pressure or dealing with identity crisis, I would believe that that person would be challenged to be a part of that team because they're maybe dealing with some things in life. So I'm, I'm looking at educating our athletes around that I is that interpersonal relationship with myself. Like a lot of times you know, athletes are dealing with things and it's challenging for them to give themselves away to that team. And so 
have you noticed or do you kind of you don't have to say anything names or anything but have you noticed how it's sometimes behavior you know life happens and then it could get in the way of that mental toughness of that game oh yeah for sure um a lot i've had a couple of teammates that you know have outside problems mm-hmm. and like when those outside problems are you know really at their worst yeah it shows yeah um so i understand like from that point yeah and that and that to me that's important because you know for for us who have these opportunities to have these identities as student athletes or athletes like myself was in the military sometimes as people we lose ourselves in those uniforms and then when life happens that identity you know could be challenged and so that's mm-hmm. just something that we're learning um in our education of studying emotional intelligence and mental toughness that sometimes that identity gets threatened or is challenged and then that person loses themselves. So that was something I just wanted to hear your perspective. So thank you for that. Yeah, for sure. The segment I have for basketball, I call it chasing hoop dreams, right? Do you have a chasing hoop dream? Um, I mean, I guess my dream is just go to college. Mm. That that's always been like my dream just to just go to college to just be in that environment and now that it's now that it's, you know, became like or have become like a, a lot more popular. Yeah. Now I really just wanna like go out and like really be in like the tournament and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's my taste in the dream. Education wise, you know, you're gonna be in an, in a college playing basketball. What about that education piece for you? Um, well, education is like very big. It is a big factor in my decision because, as much as I enjoy playing basketball, basketball is not my end all be all. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really am into like flipping houses and stuff like that mm-hmm. and real estate stuff. So. You know, going to a college that has good education that could help me, you know, chase that other dream is very important. Off season, you know, in between seasons, how do you maintain your your workouts? Um, I mean, me and my dad kind of set up a schedule, I guess. Sometimes it changes, but mm-hmm. we have a schedule that's like, okay, these days we're going to work out, and then these, like, I always have a rest day because mm-hmm. it's important to rest your body. Like, I have, like, two. Um, they're usually Fridays and Sundays if I'm not, you know, doing club. Yeah. Um, but we just continue to work out when the season is, you know, done and, you know, stay in shape, and that way when I get back into season, it won't be – that's difficult. For sure. How important is your hydration? Um, very important, but I do need to do a better job <laughs> of maintaining my hydration. For yeah. sure. It, it's a, it's a, I think all of us have that if we, if we tell the truth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. I had one more question for you. Oh, yeah. Um, my mental music segment. So when you are preparing for a game, Lacing up your sneakers, like what? What's in your headphones? You know, I'm a very calm and chill person. You know, I don't like listening to like all the crazy music that a lot of kids my age listen to. Yeah. So before the game, I like to listen to calm music, like you know, like kind of softer music and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it doesn't, I don't really care who the person is, just as long as it's got like a good vibe, you know, then I'm good. So that's what I listen to. Uh, with your brother who plays basketball and growing up with that, um, is there a competitive s- conversation between you two? Oh, all the time. <laughs> he, I tell him that I'm better than him, all that, because it's true. Because it's um, true? <laughs> yeah, I always tell him that, and he just doesn't want to believe it. And he thinks that because that when we play one-on-one, because he's bigger than me, stronger than me, that he can bully me. Right. You know, so he thinks that he's better than me. But I 
I have to let them know that that's just not how <laughs> that's not how we get it's down. Not, it's not going down like that, right? Yeah. So cool. Uh, you know, we talked about the state of women's basketball, college, and professional. You know, growing up, what what is your perspective on the? Let's go. Let's do the college first. What is your perspective on the the direction of college basketball for women? Um, I mean, I think that it's important that we have that platform to, you know, play at the next level. I think it's just important for us as girls to be able to prove that we are just as capable of being, you know, as entertaining as men. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, in different aspects. Um, and then as far as, you know, WNBA, I feel like every a lot of people – you know, continue to dog on women's basketball in general. Yeah. And I feel like every day they're being proved wrong. Yeah. And, and like I said, yeah. we, we, the way me and your dad share that is definitely entertaining. Entertaining is fundamental basketball. Like, it is great to watch. And for some, you know, for some people, they have their opinions about that. Mm hmm But that's cool. I appreciate that. Being a daddy's girl having him be there as a coach and training and then your father, how do you separate the two of those roles? Um, I mean, now it's pretty, pretty separated. You know, when we're in the gym, I'm not really like, I'm not really thinking of him as my dad, to be honest, in the gym. Um, he, sometimes, you know, just as a coach, you know, sometimes I get a little annoyed, <laughs> but you know, I know that it's not anything, you know, malicious. I For just sure. know that he wants me to be the best I can. For and sure. then when we're at home, he's my dad. For sure. So that's how I separated, to be honest. Do you enjoy being daddy's little girl? Yeah, for sure. I like it because, one, me and my dad have a good, like, bond. And, two, you know, I like to make everybody else jealous. And say something about your moms. What do you want to say about moms and her support? My mom's great. You know, my mom is my mom. She's the one who's taking me to all my practices. She's the one who's getting me to all my games. You know, she stays on me for school. Hmm. Um, and then me and my mom also have, like, a great relationship outside basketball. Like, we just spend time together, you know. So, yeah, that's my mom. I love my mom. Any of your counterparts you want to shout out from your travel or your car or your high school ball anybody want to say hello to um hey i'm Aaliyah. <laughs> how's it going yeah i just saw you today but just saying what's up um and then just anybody else who's listening that might know me hello and before i let you go anything that i missed that you want to say as far as you know, anything that you wanted to, to, to say to um, us? No, you really you really knocked it off the chart, you know? All right. I appreciate you. Thank you for taking time out tonight after you had your games today and your pops. Just tell your family I said thank you so much. And I look forward to following you and, again, having you back on uh, next year. Well, yeah, thank you. I appreciate you, you know, giving me the spot, you know, to do this. No doubt. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. This is the Frondose Show on KCA Radio, 106.5 FM, 1050 AM, Sports Collective TV, Media, Radio. We got all the sports covered. You want to be a sponsor, just cover one of these segments with us, just shout us out. We got the opportunities for you. So, again, shouts out to my crew. They're doing their thing. Shouts out to Coach Will, Robert Lamar, and, uh, again, Frondose, at Frondose on all platforms. Shout us out. What's the count? Peace. Some of us still carry the burden of battle. It threatens to drown us in our everyday lives. In battle, we had our weapons and combat gear to keep us safe, to keep us confident. But when we returned home, we were not armed with weapons and gear to cope with our own minds. I was lucky to find my combat gear, my mental weapon, and it's called Comigo. Comigo is a drug-free device that allows you to achieve calm in less than three minutes. In moments of anxiety, stress, anger, panic, or insomnia. Not with medication, 
but rather by activating the parasympathetic nervous system through breathing regulation and multisensory stimulation. A recent study has shown that Comigo decreases PTSD and anxiety levels in veterans, helping those who are suffering and having a long-lasting effect. Visit Comigo.com to learn how you can get Comigo through the VA or with a special veteran's discount code. K-C-A-A.